In psychology, there's a concept called the dark triad. The three sides of the triangle which make up the dark triad are narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. Narcissism is characterized by pride, egotism, lack of empathy, and grandiosity. Machiavellianism is characterized by manipulation of others, absence of morality, lack of emotion, and drive purely of self-interest. Psychopathy is characterized by impulsivity, selfishness, remorselessness, and a lack of emotion. While there are some overlapping traits which fit in all three personalities, such as the lack of empathy, they are also distinctly unique. In this video, I'm going to illustrate how Ramses, Miang, and Graf are respectively aligned with these three personality traits. Narcissists are often in a position of authority or leadership, feel superior to others, and feel a sense of entitlement. Ramses is particularly defined as having vulnerable narcissism, which is characterized by feelings of abandonment, inadequacy, and emptiness. Though to fully make this comparison, let's take a look at the evolution of Ramses from his creation to his inevitable realization of what he was created for. Rather than being born from a woman's womb, Chiron Ramses, project name 8080191 Ramses, was grown in the year 9975 using Cain's DNA as part of the M plan while being led by Krellian with the cooperation from Yang. The intent was to create a clone of Cain, but also an artificial contact. Since Cain was immortal, he could not be killed unless it was by himself. Hence, Ramses was created to fulfill Krellian's plan, as not even he nor Graf were capable of eliminating Cain. His other purpose as an artificial contact was likely due to the immediacy of resurrecting Deus, as he cannot be resurrected after 10,000 years in case they could not locate the last contact of this generation. However, when Faye was around 4 years old, Faye's mother Karen was taken over by Miang. Shortly after, she confirmed that her son was the real contact. Since they no longer needed Ramses to be an artificial contact, they leaned heavily into his role as being the one who would assassinate Cain. They did this by telling him, while he was still being grown but capable of understanding them, that he was trash and they would no longer need him since her son Faye was the contact. At an embryonic level, Ramses was instilled with the notion that he was trash. This one word would torment him incessantly, as it is what Karen called him until he was eventually dumped into a slum filled with trash before he is fully developed into human form. Here he kills and merges with a 15 year old boy named Chiron Becker, who happened to be in the same area where Ramses was dumped, and he takes his identity. He pretends to be Becker, including in front of his new family. Though they know that his personality is different, they don't really notice the change. In a short story written by Cleo Saga about Ramses, she writes that while living as an impersonator in his new family, he loved drinking milkshakes, and in one instance, when he dumps the remaining shake into the sink and watches it go down to the drain, it reminds him that he, just like the discarded milkshake, are both trash. After both parents die, he changes his name to Karan Ramses and enters Judgeon Military Academy and quickly rises up in the ranks. Ramses is inherently powerful, but his drive to become the opposite of trash is what really propelled him to the top. About a month before Karen is killed, Ramses meets a woman who later becomes Miang and they enter a relationship where she continues to manipulate Ramses. Ramses and Josiah create an elite unit called the Elements within Gebler and recruit Saiyan and Sigurd to join the ranks as well. Eventually, however, Saiyan, Sigurd, and even Josiah would abandon Ramses for their own reasons. Unlike Gebler, which would never allow third class citizens into their ranks, Ramses did not care what class you were born into. If you were powerful enough to join the ranks, that's all that mattered to him. He recruits successors when he saved Seraphita and Tolone from being processed at a Soylent facility. Around the same time, Ramses is sent to Elru to crush a rebellion, but he encounters a young Id under the supervision of Graf. During this battle, Id severely injures Ramses, which results in recurring PTSD-induced nightmares about Id. When Ramses returns to the ruins, he rescues Dominia, who eventually becomes an element as well. But don't mistake these acts as empathetic. For narcissists, rescuing someone is a demonstration of their superiority, and he needed a powerful group of elements to make himself more powerful after the previous members abandoned him. The next encounter Ramses has with Faye is when he and Bart rescue Margie from Shakan. Faye uses a move identical to it, and Ramses recognizes this, which triggers his PTSD. Later on, Ramses attacks the Yggdrasil with knowledge that Sigurd was on board. Feeling betrayed by him, he wants him to surrender, but when they do not, he reluctantly orders to resume attacking. However, before he can accomplish this, Id shows up and physically devastates his gear wyvern. This event becomes a catalyst for Ramses because his normally sound judgement becomes clouded with pure desire to kill Faye, as he knows he and Id are the same person despite Faye not having this knowledge. 
Groff informs Ramses that Faye is on board the Goliath, and Ramses ignores his orders to excavate the anima relics, and instead chases after Faye. When Bart shoots down the Goliath and Faye is rescued by the Thames, Ramses goes after him again, this time noting that Faye was using a different gear and calls him his arch-rival. Ramses almost kills Faye here, but is saved by Ellie's air rods. When Faye is climbing Babel Tower, Ramses tries to kill him again but fails to do so as Chevette forces him to retreat. After this defeat, the Gazelle Ministry, with the intent of using him to kill Kane, berate him and call him trash. Despite this, Ramses' drive to kill Faye increases exponentially here as he is intent to prove his worth. We see more of his mental instability when he accosts Ellie when she is in Krellian's lab about Faye's whereabouts. Ramses took a mental stabilizer and lamented why Faye is demonstrably more powerful than Ramses to Ellie. He leaves without an answer, but runs into Saiten and confronts him about his betrayal. Narcissus cannot handle rejection, and he was betrayed by Saiten earlier when he left the elements, and again now that he sided with his arch-rival Faye. Saiten told him that he sided with Faye, which further enraged his betrayal, as he feels anyone siding with Faye is his enemy. Krellian aligns Wyvern with an anima relic, and it becomes an appropriately named Vendetta. He is tasked with capturing Ellie and killing Faye, who are both flying in Welltel. Once Ramses realizes how much stronger his gear is compared to Faye's, he goes into a rampage and nearly kills both Faye and Ellie, the latter of whom he was supposed to bring back to Krellian. After his rampage, he realizes he wasn't supposed to hurt Ellie, but he didn't care because he finally got what he wanted and felt satisfied. That satisfaction didn't last for long, however. After Tor saved their lives, Melkwire and Balthazar retrofitted Welltal with nanomachine technology, and shortly after leaving the forest where they were shut down, Faye encounters Ramses and defeats him again. This was another turning point for Ramses, as the confidence and ego that allowed him to climb up was now destroyed. He feels worthless, but yet his resentment towards Faye further intensifies. Later, he launches an assault on Nissan in an attempt to find Faye, but he is not there, so instead he threatens to kill Ellie. When he is unable to do so, he feels utterly worthless and like trash. He laments his failures to the Gazelle Ministry, Krellian, and Miang. At this point for them, they feel their long game of manipulation has culminated to this exact moment and direct Ramses to kill Cain with the promise that the reason he cannot defeat Faye is because his powers are split in half between himself and Cain, and he could have all of the power if Cain were to be killed. And so Ramses decapitates the once immortal ruler of Solaris in hopes that it will give him the power to defeat Faye. However, the promise of power and immortality was a lie. Ramses fulfilled the purpose he was created for, and they didn't really need him anymore. In Merkava, Faye encounters Ramses and he tells Faye about his life, from his growth to being trashed, to how he ended up here. Even the elements who truly love him cannot talk him out of his mental state. Faye defeats Ramses once more, and this defeat quells any desire Ramses had towards killing Faye. His personality shifts and he questions everything about himself after this loss. When he confronts Miang about his purpose, she admits she and Krillian used him in order to fulfill their wishes of killing Cain in order to revive Deus. In his pain, he strikes Miang and Krellian with his sword, but Krellian's body is restored using nanomachines, and Miang's death only furthered her agenda as she was able to transmigrate into Ellie as Miang is fated as to not being able to kill herself. Afterwards, Faye Party brings a despondent Krellian aboard the Yggdrasil, where Saiten, along with Ramses' elements, convince him that his life has meaning despite everything he's gone through. This is where Ramses' story comes to an end as far as we know. If we ever get the details in part 6, maybe we'll find out what becomes of him. And that's Ramses, a man driven entirely by his ego and his need to feel superior to others. But if Ramses had been given the love he so desperately wanted when he was a child, he likely would not have turned into the narcissist he was for the majority of the game. Also, it's no coincidence that Faye's mother, who as Miang presided with Krellian over the Ramses project, had the name Karen. This is a reference to the psychoanalyst Karen Horney who wrote about the theories of neurosis where she talks about coping strategies such as the need for affection and approval, the need for a partner, the need for social recognition and personal admiration to be valued by others, the need for power, personal achievement, independence, and perfection. If you like this video, please subscribe as I plan on talking about Miang and Graph as part of this series. Click like if you liked the video and dislike it if you didn't like it, but please tell me in the comments how we can improve. Thanks and take care.